that by by you know dodging north south. Notre Dame five and zero oh, all time against teams from the MAC. Let's go to South Bend and Mark Dixon. Thank you, Anish. Here we are live at Arlotta Stadium, Detroit versus Notre Dame. The bagpipes leading the Fighting Irish onto the field as they look to defend their home turf against the Titans of Detroit. Welcome to the NCAA Men's Lacrosse Championship presented by Northwestern Mutual. We take a look at the lower half of the bracket. This is the first game of the lower portion of the bracket. Winner advances to the quarterfinals next weekend in Indianapolis, Indiana. Welcome in everybody, Mark Dixon, happy to be joined by former Virginia All-American and Tourton Award winner Matt Ward. Detroit, a relatively new program, Notre Dame a perennial power. What's in store for today's ball game? Well, this is a Detroit team that's won three straight games, mainly because their aggressive style of play on the defensive side of things. They actually lead the country and cause turnovers, but they're going to have their hands full get today against Notre Dame. That's looking to kind of regain that momentum that earned them the number two spot in this NCAA tournament. Well, anybody looking to gain momentum needs an edge. Who gives each of these ball clubs the edge today? Well, for Detroit, Mike Burney is their elite player. He actually has 30 goals and leads the team from the midfield with a 100 mile an hour shot from the outside. And then for Notre Dame, Matt Cavanaugh, the freshman, is their most consistent and dangerous offensive weapon. He can score a lot of goals, but he's also very aware and is able to make those assists to his teammates. And let's take a look at how these teams are planning for success, brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Well, for Detroit, I think they just need to kind of build upon what they've done the last three weeks and continue to play their style of lacrosse. And then for any upset, you need great goaltending and you need to control face-offs. And then for Notre Dame, they've lost two straight games, both to Syracuse by six points each. They need to kind of regain some of that momentum. And then I think whenever you have an athletic superiority in a matchup, you really have to go out and impose your will, press out on this Detroit team and really try to cause a lot of turnovers. Detroit and Notre Dame. Detroit only in their fifth year of existence. Notre Dame, of course, a perennial power. They were in the national championship weekend last year, losing to Loyola in the national semifinals. A.J. Lavelle on the season, five and six, but he was absolutely huge in their win against Marist and their win against Siena in the MAC tournament. He is playing his best lacrosse here at the end of the season. And John Kemp, first team all Big East, first team all American from a year ago. Matt, he struggled a little bit here in 2013. A little uncharacteristic for this Notre Dame goaltender. He's definitely not had the year that he did previously, but I think a lot of it is their defense isn't quite the same. He's seeing a little bit higher quality shots, but he's still very good. One of the elite goaltenders in all of college across. We get set for the faceoff. Damian Hicks. For the Detroit Titans, battling against Liam O'Connor for Notre Dame. O'Connor wins the opening draw, and O'Connor has missed the last seven Notre Dame games with a lower body injury. His return, a huge boost to the Fighting Irish, wins the opening draw. But the turnover immediately, aggressive play by Detroit. They win the ball to get the first offensive possession. And sticking with what they've done very well, and like we mentioned in the open, they lead the country and cause turnovers, and they already get one right there in the opening faceoff. John Dwyer with the strip of O'Connor, who raced in. You saw Detroit really locking off after Notre Dame won that opening faceoff. They get possession. What do you expect out of Detroit here, the Titans offensively? You know, for them, I think, you know, the way Notre Dame plays defense, it, it's very packed in and very coordinated. So for them, I don't think they really want to force the issue here. They need to be patient. Upsets are generally won in low-scoring games, not high run-and-gun shootouts. So for Detroit, I think they need to be patient and methodic, methodical in the way they approach this Notre Dame defense. Notre Dame, traditionally one of the best defenses in the country. This year is no different. We see Detroit being very methodical with the new rules, timer on, 30-second invisible shot clock. We'll see the leeway given to them by the officials. This is Mike Burney, feet across crease. Looks like it was deflected off of a Notre Dame stick. Possession back to the Titans. And first impression there is 
Mike Burney is going to be the person initiating for Detroit, but Notre Dame looks to be slow to slide on him. They're going to allow the matchup to kind of unfold, and they believe that they can control him there and make him become a, you know, the one player that does it himself and not get easy passes across for feeds. Timer on against Detroit. 30 seconds to shoot. If this ball goes over the line, it's picked up by Detroit. It'll be a continuation of the timer on, which it is. Shot defined by hitting the goalie, hitting a post, or scoring a goal. And that's an early timer on, and I think the refs are setting the tone, afraid that Detroit may try to take the air out of it. But they threw a skip pass, which is generally, in my opinion, some form of offense where you're attacking the opposing defense. Notre Dame collects the loose ball, looking to clear. The Irish, the number two seed on the season, 10 and four. But as you mentioned earlier, Matt, coming in off a two game losing streak to Syracuse in the Big City Classic in the regular season, then in the semifinals of the Big East Tournament, this team really looking to find their mojo, especially on the offensive end of the field. And I think they're fortunate to get the two seed in this tournament. They had some good wins early in the season, but this is a big opportunity for them to kind of springboard themselves back into the you know, the elite category. Right now, I'd say they're seeded too, but I don't think they're the second best team in the country. All it takes is a little confidence and play here and there to get back to that level. Jim Marlott with the errant pass, corralled by A.J. Lavelle. Detroit, this team, playing very loose lacrosse. They were 2-9 and nine heading into the Canisius game, their last regular season conference game. They needed to win to get in, and they won that game. And the motto for Coach Matt Holtz and his team, party on. And you watch them in warm-ups. They had American flag do-rags on. They were all doing the Irish jig and dancing. They are having a great time, just happy to be here. Uh, and giving themselves an opportunity to hopefully make history, be the first MAC team to ever win a game in the NCAA tournament. With a MAC 0-11 all-time, shot just wide. Detroit waving the banner for that conference here today. Detroit catches Notre Dame on a little bit of transition. Substitutions are in. Cutter for Detroit. See Detroit very spread out offensively. Good strategy against this Notre Dame defense. I think they're, what they're trying to do is they're trying to get their best Dodgers space to work and operate. A lot of times Notre Dame likes to play close and compact defense. So Detroit's thinking maybe they spread out a little, but they'll force the Notre Dame defensive players to kind of go away from their comfort zones and open things up for their Dodgers. Well, Coach Matt Holtz telling us this week that you have to penetrate their defense. Notre Dame slides as good as anyone, and they don't make mistakes. Shot out of bounds. Timer on was just put on Detroit again. That shot did not satisfy the criteria. Therefore, the invisible shot clock rolls on. You can see the velocity that Bernie has with that outside shot. It was Andy Hebden, the freshman for Detroit, stepping in, but he is throttled by goaltender John Kemp. First save for him today. Possession over to the Irish. This is Matthew Collins. He has earned some playing time here in the late season. Let's take a look to the left of your screen, Matt. You view of that shot. You can see Hebden tries coming underneath, and Kemp makes the save. If Kemp doesn't get his piece of that, it's a goal. The ball will be in the back of the net before he stepped in the crease. There's Matt Cavanaugh wheeling and dealing for the Fighting Irish. Ball is now in the stick of Westy Hopkins. Hopkins being guarded. By Jordan Houtby, long stick midfielder, member of the Canadian national team, 153 career cost turnovers for Houtby. Active leader in NCAA Division I men's lacrosse. This is a Detroit team. It's the second year in a row they've led the country. So Coach Holtz is really allows his players to take risks and play aggressive, and it's paid dividends this season. Here we see Kavanaugh as Notre Dame trying to figure out this Detroit defense. And I'd like to see the refs put a stall warning on here. They've called it twice on Detroit early on in possessions, Notre Dame. Doing much of the same type offense, and the refs aren't putting that stall warning on. This is Will Corrigan working. And timer on against Notre Dame. So we've had three so far in this one, two on Detroit. First one here on the Irish. 
This is Ryan Foley working behind the cage, looking to get it up top. Notre Dame so far unable to penetrate this Titan D. Skip pass picked up by Happy. Nice interception by the senior out of St. Catharines, Ontario. Notre Dame yet to take a shot. Detroit looking to be every bit as athletic as Notre Dame, and that was something I thought Notre Dame would have the advantage in, but they're, they've come to play. And they're, they're the team coming in with momentum. Notre Dame's the team that's come in losing two straight games, both by six goals to Syracuse. So who really knows where their mental uh, state is at this point, but but Detroit really seems to have a belief in a confidence that they're going to win this game. You talk about the mental state. You played at Virginia. You won two national championships. You're used to being the number one seed or a high seed playing against a team that really, on paper, doesn't belong on the field with you. How does that do to your mental edge as the favorite? You know what? If I think you come to a game not approached to win at that number one seed, you're not a favorite or an elite in that point. The best teams always come to every game with a mental approach that they're going to play their best game no matter who they're playing what the opponent is. And, and Notre Dame needs to take that confidence in this game. Loose ball picked up behind the goal, shot the score. Detroit is on the board. Brandon Bauergaard, the sophomore out of Clarkson, Michigan, draws first blood for Detroit. Detroit doing the little things better. Getting the loose ball ground balls. Outworking Notre Dame. And Bauergaard picks it up at X, steps up the field with a little stick fake outside, gets to the doorstep and finishes with composure. A big contingent of Detroit fans to the left of us here at Arlotta Stadium erupted with the excellent effort by Bauergaard. And Detroit takes the early lead on Notre Dame. This is Hicks against O'Connor. O'Connor jumps the whistle. New rule this year, three or more face-off violations in any given half results in a 30-second penalty. That's number one for Notre Dame. And that's a big rule, especially early in games. We saw in the Yale game earlier, their first two face-offs, they jumped. They didn't win a face-off in the first half, but they reasserted themselves in the second half when that was wiped clean and they were able to get aggressive again. So it really does mess with the face-off people's mental approach to the game. Well, the Bulldogs came back in that game trailing 5-1 and half. They outscore Penn State 9-2 in the second half of action. Yale, their first NCAA playoff win since 1992. So hats off to Andy Shea and his Yale Bulldogs. Jim Marlott working. Feet inside and snared out of the air by Dwyer. This is no, not unusual for Notre Dame. Their last two home games, Georgetown, they fell behind 4 0. Villanova, they fell behind 2 0. They rallied to win those games. Third cause turnover for Detroit, however. Detroit again, you know, playing that aggressive style defense, active sticks in the passing lane. Notre Dame trying to dodge, make two simple passes, and then throw a skip. But Detroit scouted them well and has continued to pick off those cross crease passes. Notre Dame defender falls down, the wheel gets broken up. A cutter was coming from behind for Detroit. Nice checking by the Irish. Ground ball in the corner, who's gonna come up with it? It's the Titans. This is Hebden. And again, every 50-50 ground ball is coming up red. Detroit had three people fighting for it while Notre Dame only had two. You have to like the advantage when you have more people on those loose ball scraps. Bowergard with the ball in the corner up to Mike Bernie. First midfield line in the game for Detroit. Mike Bernie, Scott Drummond, and Andy Hebden. Timer on again against the Titans. Stephen O'Hara working against Bernie. Bernie down the wing to Masterson, Tom Masterson. Slow and methodical offense here by the Titans. A 30-second timer is on. And if I were them, I'd look to get it to Bernie. He's got a short stick matchup for the first time in the game and really look to initiate. Feeding to the crease, shot to go! Alex Maney with the cut, Mike Bernie with the assist. And Detroit is up 2-0. Talk about efficient offense. Detroit moved the ball very, very well. 
forced the stall warning on, but they didn't panic and they moved the ball around until they found Bernie with a short stick matchup. Getting his ninth assist of the season. He's known as a shooter, a dodger that's looking for his own shot, but today showing that he's much more than that as he finds number 36, Alex Maney, on the crease. Look at the bench. They are feeling it. Pumped up as Detroit leads 2-0. Hicks and O'Connor return to the faceoff dot. Hicks, a great story, a walk-on, not recruited, just showed up at practice one day. And they eventually made him a face-off man, made the all-rookie team in the MAC. And he's been doing great work for Coach Matt Holtz, winning 52%. He'll get the win there as Jordan Halpy picks up the loose ball. All the momentum on the side of the red-clad Detroit Titans. Is it Detroit just playing with a lot of energy and emotion, or is Notre Dame flat? Detroit right now just all around looks like the team that wants it more. Notre Dame playing as they've lost two straight games, flat. And Detroit on the flip side is playing with the confidence. This is going to potentially, they're able to pull this upset up today. The first time in program history they would win four straight games. And that would be, that fourth straight win would be the biggest in program history for sure. Talking with Coach Kevin Corgan of Notre Dame this week, the Irish were in exams all week, scrimmaged themselves Sunday and Tuesday, and then didn't have their first real formal practice in preparation for this game till Thursday night at 9.45. This is always a hectic time of the year for college students with exams, and as a student athlete, you have to go to practice, and it's tough to get into that right mental state, and I think that probably has a lot to do. Shot looks like that either rung off the post or didn't make it to the net, but either way, it was knocked away from the cage. Ground ball picked up by the Titans. Bowerguard up to Masterson. Over to Neems. Shots, Detroit with six. Notre Dame with only one. The Titans controlling the tempo, controlling the pace, hence the two nothing lead on the scoreboard. Errant pass, however, will be a turnover. Possession Irish. And those are the type of plays you can't afford in a game when you're not supposed to win. You can't have those unforced turnovers, just the lazy, throwing off your back foot type pass. The highest level of lacrosse really differentiates, differentiates itself with the way the players move their feet and are always moving forward. You can't be throwing it off your back foot. And Notre Dame has taken a couple of Detroit jabs. They're staggered a little bit right here. We'll see if they can counter punch. Coming up on two and a half minutes left to go in the first quarter. Detroit two, Notre Dame nothing. Detroit unseated, Matt champion, five and nine on the year. Notre Dame, the at-large bid, number two seed, and a favorite to get to Philadelphia all year long. Stephen Murphy gets the ball behind, now up top. Mishandle picked up by Detroit. Here come the Titans. Troy Dennis leading the break. Good recovery by Notre Dame getting into the hole, but another turnover by the Irish. That's the third either picked off pass or tipped pass to cause a turnover for Detroit so far in this game, playing the passing lanes very well. What I also loved there was their awareness to pull the ball out. They recognized they didn't have the numbers in the fast break, and ultimately they're a team that needs to dictate the pace of play and control the tempo much more so than Notre Dame needs to. Coach Matt Holtz telling us this week that his team was playing tense lacrosse before Canisius, therefore the adoption of the party on mantra. They impose their will over Canisius. They're trying to do the same here to Notre Dame. Loose ball front, bodies are flying. Ball is loose, it's picked up, it's Buglione trying to wheel out of trouble. He coughs it up. Picked up by O'Hara, O'Hara looking for help. Nice little flip pass and here comes Notre Dame. Slow break. Matthew Collins, he gets stripped, balls on the ground. Jamie Hebden with the takeaway, and here comes Detroit. It's Beauregard. Slow break, it's Hebden. Hebden tries to toe drag through the defense. Kemp picks it up, flag flies. Possession picked up by Notre Dame. It's going to be a foul against Detroit. Slow whistle everywhere on the field, so Notre Dame will get a little bit of a push here. And once the ball hits the ground, 
Matt Cavanaugh with the shot, just wide. And we'll see what the call is. 39 red. 39 red. Technical push. Push. 39 red. Technical push. Alex Maney is the perpetrator. John Kemp hustles and makes a play for his team. He definitely went down and looks like there's a little contact there. And again, at the, at the end of the day, if a ref sees you make contact on the back of a player, regardless how hard you push them, if they go to the ground, it's going to result in a flag. When you're looking to get back into games, extra man offense oftentimes is the elixir that you need. And, and the Irish have a chance right now. Shot out of bounds, possession stays with Notre Dame. The Irish coming into today, only at 23% on the extra man. Typically want to be around 40, 42% are the better units in the country. And that'll do it for the quarter. Notre Dame will start the second quarter with possession because of the penalty. And Coach Kevin Corrigan trying to get his troops organized. We're back with the second quarter. Detroit, Notre Dame, right after this. bench as the Irish try to regroup. They have been jumped here at Olada Stadium at home as the Detroit Titans lead this first round NCAA playoff game 2-0. And there's the man leading the Detroit Titans only in their fifth year of Division I men's lacrosse. The, the fastest program to ever make the NCAA lacrosse tournament along with Bryant who made it this year as well. But this team has really embodied his personality and when he went, went out to build this program, he focused on getting a goaltender, getting face-off players, and getting those elite athletes that he's identified within the state of Michigan to really build those hard-nosed players to do the little things and play defense and defensive midfield. Shot goes wide as the Detroit Titans kill the penalty. He told us this week that when he got the Detroit job, he turned to John Kenny, the high school coach at Detroit Country Day School, his son Derek. Goaltender for Virginia, won a national championship in 1999. And Matt, the first person he said you need to talk to is your old coach, Dom Starsh. He's in the studio this weekend for us. And basically, Coach Starsh had told him, he said, look, a goalie can steal a game at any point. And if you're outmatched, but you have a better goalie, you have a shot. And then getting face-offs and getting those star one offensive player. And, and, and Coach Holt says when he looks for those players, he's looking in Long Island and, and Canada. But then the rest of the players are he's staying in state. Lavelle with the save. That's why Dom Starsha told him to get a goalie first. Lavelle with the high heat, fights it off. Possession will stay with Notre Dame. Second save for Lavelle. And Notre Dame going back to their Syracuse loss. They now have just one goal in their last three quarters. The worst scoring drought of the season for the Irish. It continues on that possession. Detroit, the longer the underdog can hang around, stay in this game they're going to gain confidence and be even tougher to put away as this thing continues and it's not only them gaining confidence it's notre dame starting to think about it a little bit too much things tend to quicksand out of control mentally when things continue to not go your way detroit really has energized the city of detroit and matt holt saying in an area where it often gets dogged a whole lot he said this week walking around with his Detroit lacrosse sweatshirt, people are saying, hey coach, congratulations and good luck. He said, it doesn't happen in Detroit when it comes to lacrosse. But he said it's an elated, an elated feeling and it's affirmation that the school did the right thing, elevating lacrosse to the Division I level five years ago. Detroit back on the offense. You can see Notre Dame electing to put a short stick on Masterson, the attackman. Feet across crease, can't be handled. Ball squirts out of bounds, possession to Notre Dame. 
That was a nice job by number 22, Jack Near for Notre Dame, playing good short stick defense on Masterson, forcing the turnover. Notre Dame with the quick restart, coming down, still looking for their first goal of the contest. <laughs> Kavanaugh <laughs> tests his defender, being marked up by Jamie Hebden. Kavanaugh, all first team Big East. Shot the goal. Notre Dame is on the board. It's Connor Doyle with the marker, and the Irish have broken the seal. Connor Doyle, the sophomore from Baltimore, Gilman School, a left handed player with this great individual effort. And what's key in that play is look at the height that he's able to get and the positioning in the field. He creates so much more angle for him to shoot the higher he gets and the further inside to the middle of the field. Very nice individual effort by Connor Doyle. Doyle just took Halpy, the long stick midfielder for Detroit, to the rack and sticks it. We'll see if Notre Dame can build off of the momentum. It's Halpy off of the wing. Ball scooting out of bounds. Halpy flicks it back into the field of play. Look out, here comes Hicks, who will run it down. 22 plus minute scoreless streak now broken for Notre Dame with that goal. In this contest, their first goal in over three quarters of lacrosse, going back to that Big East semifinal loss to Syracuse. And I think Notre Dame's gonna need a lot more plays like that last one from Connor Doyle, the individual efforts to get some momentum and get some energy amongst these players who again have come out flat to start this first first game in the NCAA tournament. The Mac never has advanced past the first round. Can Detroit turn that doorknob and get into this national quarterfinals? Huge task ahead of them with Notre Dame in front, but they are playing extremely good lacrosse, leading two to one right now. This is Chris Neems working outside against Quinn Cully, the short stick D midi for Notre Dame. Detroit has been very patient, very methodical here on the offense. 30 second timer on against Detroit. Tight rope shot to go. Alex Maney tiptoes the crease, gets top side and beats John Kemp, his second of the contest. That is also the second goal today that Detroit scored with the timer on. And I love that patience and the way that they're able to execute, but Maney, the all-time leading scorer in Detroit program history, gets the third goal for the Titans today with a nice individual effort, with the nice sneak, and he actually goes near side on Kemp. Maney, the junior out of Lindbrook, New York, a second team all Mac selection. That time he shows he's the Mac dad. He comes around, takes the hit, and sticks it. Another face-off win for Detroit, it's Halpy collecting the ground ball. And the Titans just simply refuse to back down against Notre Dame. We talk about injuries too, Matt. Damian Hicks is the main faceoff man because our number one draw taker, Tyler Corcoran, broke his hand midway through the season. Then they lost short stick defensive specialist Nick Garippa to a torn ACL. Shooting and scoring a goal, no less, he ripped his ACL. And then, of course, they're missing Shane Adams, projected to be their best attackman coming in this season. He tore his rotator cuff in the Navy game, third game of the season. So Detroit has really cobbled this thing together with, with not their top line starters that began the season. And I think that's a credit to Coach Holtz and his recruiting. Getting players that he knows that are maybe a little bit under the radar, but fit his system. As this goal will be disallowed for a crease violation. Maney was poking at the ball, it skidded across the goal line, but he's gonna say it was goalie interference. When the goalie is in the cylinder, you cannot make any contact whatsoever with his stick. That time Maney does it, no goal. Cavanaugh steps around top side. Feed across crease, can't be handled. Here comes Halpy. As Halpy gallops across the midfield line for the Detroit Titans. And he clears it successfully. 
And there's always that cliche saying that you need your freshmen to play more like sophomores when you get to the NCAA tournament. That right there by Matt Cavanaugh was a freshman-esque play. He didn't realize the situation, and how important and critical that possession was for the Fighting Irish. Detroit really controlling things now. Just under nine minutes left to go in the second quarter. Titans three, Irish one. Could we have perhaps the biggest upset in NCAA history on our hands? The Titans, the number four seed in the MAC tournament, knocked off Marist, the number one seed, then erased a 9-4 deficit against number three seed, Siena, to win in overtime, courtesy of the goal by this man, Mike Bernie. Shot goes wide. And you can just see the torque in Bernie's torso and his shot when he's taken those shots in the run. Absolutely has a powerful right-handed shot on the run that if he gets it on cage, you gotta like his chances of going in, but right now he's spraying it a little bit in his first three or four shots. Well, interesting what Notre Dame is doing. Close defenseman Stephen O'Hara is up marking Bernie. So they're not using long stick midfielders Tyler Anderson or Matt Landis to cover Bernie. They're using what many consider to be Notre Dame's top defender. Well, it's between him and Matt Miller. But it's exhibit 1A, 1 and 1A when it comes to this Notre Dame defense. Anytime a player leads his team in scoring from the midfield, that means he's a big time player. It's very difficult to do. And if it's not for Kemp and Cage right now, Detroit could be up by five or six. Kemp he's with, playing very well. Yeah, Kemp with a really nice save right there off of the shot by Maney. So Detroit has been able to penetrate this defense. Bernie with a feed across. Nice handle by Maney. Spends it backside. Not handled by Masterson. Masterson will try to hunt the ground ball down. Nice ground ball play by the Titans. Man ball right there. Fundamental as it gets. And another example of Detroit wanting it more, having more red jerseys around the ball than Notre Dame does gold. Scott Drummond working the ball behind this Irish crowd yet to get into this game. Now Bernie is matched up on Tyler Anderson, or excuse me, Matt Landis. Timer on against the Titans, 30 seconds to shoot. Ball spins far side. Shot off the pipe! That satisfies the timer on, so if Detroit can track this ground ball down, which they do, they now have a fresh offensive set under no time constraints. Everything seemingly going Detroit's way right now. And things seem to go your way when you play with more energy and more confidence. It's just the nature of the beast. And clearly Detroit's in that position right now. Winning the ground ball battle 17 to six against the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. They collected two big ones here on this possession to keep the pressure on Notre Dame. And Notre Dame's a team that's not going to score a lot of goals. It's just not their MO. And right now, if Detroit continues to keep the ball away from them, Detroit's, I mean, Notre Dame's going to have to start to change the way they play, and that could really be a bad thing for them. Notre Dame averaging just under 10 goals a game. Detroit just under nine. But the conventional wisdom is... The feet inside, the conventional wisdom, keep them to single digits. You score double digits, and you're going to win the game. John Kemp corrals the loose ball. Turnover for Detroit. Here come the Irish. Nice retreat, however, into the hole by Detroit. They cut off any transition opportunity by Notre Dame. So you're the Irish. You haven't had the ball in about three, four minutes. You've turned the ball over. You're losing the ground ball battle. What's the strategy here on this possession? Well, what you have to do is you have to be patient. You can't force it because you're, your defense is tired. They've been working hard for the last three or four minutes because you haven't had the ball. So first thing first, you got to give your defense a rest. But then also kind of just get into the flow of the game. Offensively, it's tough to play off one another if you're turning the ball over and playing sloppily like they are right now in the first half. Just a sloppy exchange between Stephen Murphy and Jim Marlott. Turnover to Detroit. Lavelle on the clear. Thirty out of the fifty players on this Michigan roster hail from the state of Michigan. Coach Holt telling us this week that most of my athletes come from Michigan, 
my skill position players, Canadian and from uh, Long Island, New York. And Coach Holtz said he's much of the mindset that he loves multi-sport athletes. He looks at kids and say, whether you play football or not, and that's one of the trends that I, I see in the high school level with the younger is kids trying to become just lacrosse players. That doesn't work. For the very few, it will work. But for most kids, you need to learn what it takes to be an athlete in multiple sports and learn some sort of athletic intellect, if you will, which you gain by playing football. You learn a lot about yourself or playing basketball. You see the field and see things differently that you don't by just going out and shooting a lacrosse ball. When you talk about basketball, the hand-eye coordination, the ability to defend. How about wrestling for face-off work? Always good. And football, well, football just to get beat up. Yeah, well, I mean, you, th you think about wrestlers, you learn a lot about yourself <laughs> being a wrestler. And the more you know about yourself as an athlete, the more you know when you can push your limits. And, and that's certainly a skill these kids need to have. Talk about skill. Another goal by the Detroit Titans. It's Brandon Beauregard. Detroit continues to roll. Bowergard getting his second goal of the season. The sophomore with a nice off ball cut. And you can see here, just a simple off door cut. Notre Dame gets caught ball watching. And I love the shot placement going back away to the far post. When you run across the middle of the field, the goalie comes off his post and starts going the other way. And if you can put it to the far post, you got to like your chances. And we saw Bauregard, after scoring that goal, run off the field, really holding his left arm very gingerly. We'll see if he was injured and if he can come back in this game. He is out right now. Hicks on the faceoff, gets the happy. Slow break opportunity. Detroit pulls it out. Smart play. Trevor Bosco, Brosco was in to take that last face off for the Irish. He can't win. Damian Hicks really getting a lot of possessions for the Titans. Talk about sticking to a game plan. Detroit clearly executing what they want. They're not forcing the issue in transition. That was a transition opportunity. It wasn't a natural four on three, but they had an opportunity, but they understand that the more they hold hold on the ball and dictate the pace of this play, Notre Dame gets out of their comfort zone. And they're not a team built to come back from any sort of deficit, whether it's three goals or four goals in the second half. It's going to be a challenge for them. Well, here comes Bernie. Jordan Halpy stayed on to play an extended shift of a little offense with the long pole. He now trots off. Bowregard not in the game for Detroit right now. This is Nick Malucci with the ball. He has taken Bowregard's spot. Timer on against Detroit. Another stall warning. 30 seconds to shoot. Bernie looking to create. Nice crisp ball movement by the Titans. They seem very comfortable with the pace. Quick double. It's O'Hara. Up to Drummond. Less than 10 seconds to shoot for the Titans. Can they get a shot on Cage? Drummond to Bernie. Bernie, let's fly. Shot to go. Mike Bernie with the buzzer beater of the 30-second timer on. And it's party on for the Titans. The third goal for the Titans with the timer on. That is just awesome. Offense, they're being patient. They're under 10 seconds here, and Bernie scroots it off the shoulder of number 43 for Notre Dame, Matt Landis to the far post. Weekend at Bernie's becoming a nightmare for Matt Kemp in the cage. Well, let's take let's take a look at our player portfolio brought to you by Sector Spiders. It's Mike Bernie, most outstanding player at the MAC tournament, five goals in that championship game, including the game winner in overtime. A second team all MAC selection. And Matt Holt's telling us this week that when he gets the ball on cage, he's dangerous, and he's doing it now in the last two weeks of the season. And you can see there, he was spraying the ball early on in the game. He wasn't hitting the cage, but with his velocity, he doesn't need to worry about the accuracy as much. If it gets on the six by, uh, onto the goal, it's gonna be tough for any goalie to make the stop. Bernie's such a big player for Detroit, 6'1", 203. Speaking to your multi-sport 
discussion a little bit earlier, Matt. He was a quarterback in high school running the option, not just a drop back pocket passer, but a guy who had to get out, take on linebackers. And he is really doing a great job here as Detroit has bulged their lead to 5-1. And just a mental mistake right there as the Detroit attackman Tom Masterson stepped on the end line. Excuse me, that was Scott Drummond. Turnover to Notre Dame. Marlott working against the short stick defensive midfield of Chris Neems. Less than a minute to go here in the first quarter. This is a big possession for Notre Dame. I wouldn't be surprised if Coach Corrigan calls a timeout as they just did right there. From your lips to their ears, Coach Corrigan wants to talk things over. He knows Notre Dame needs a shot in the arm, needs some momentum, so they'll talk things over in this set. The Detroit Titans, they lead Notre Dame 5-1. We're back with the rest of the first half right after this. And he's Shroff in studio with Quinn Kesnick and Virginia head coach Dom Starja. Coach, what are we watching here? This is shocking. As I recall, I picked Detroit, you know, in this game. <laughs> so uh, nice this is going just the way I planned. Uh, you know, this is, uh, I would like to be a fly in the wall in both these locker rooms at halftime. Lloyd Christmas on line one. I'm saying there's a chance, Mark Dixon. You bet, Anish. And Detroit is believing right now. They're up 5-1. Notre Dame just trying to piece some things together. Detroit loose and having a great time. The Men's College Lacrosse Championship heads to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where the action begins Saturday, May 25th at 2.30 p.m. Eastern, live on ESPN2. For more information, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 89 championships. Let's take a look at our side of the bracket. We're the first game here, Notre Dame, Detroit. You got Ohio State, Towson, but how about those two titanic matchups sandwiched in the middle? Maryland, Cornell, Duke, Loyola. Maryland, Cornell, for my bet, the best game of the weekend. Couldn't tell you who, I th who was gonna win that one, both programs at the elite level. Amazing that that's a first round matchup. Easily could be the championship game on any given year. And of course, Duke and Loyola Duke, six straight championship weekends. Loyola defending national champion. Cut from behind. Shot denied. A.J. Lavelle with the save. Wide open opportunity for Sean Rogers, and he is stuffed. Detroit on the clear. We'll see if Matt Holtz lets him play it out or if he takes a timeout. Under 30 seconds to go here in the second quarter. Timeout, Titans. And look at the bench as they greet A.J. Lavelle. Detroit is excited. And there's the man that gets them excited, A.J. Lavelle. We're back with the rest of the first half after these messages. I'm in uh, just a few minutes. This first half by Detroit, put it in context, Quint. Historical context. This would be the biggest upset in NCAA tournament history. Got a lot of lacrosse to play here, you know. <laughs> so uh, you're trying to, uh, you know, hold on here, uh, Detroit. Uh, we got a lot. Of, we got a long way to go. You know, uh. Titans though up five to one. Mark. Anish, thank you very much. And we get a look at how Detroit got there, five one, as we take a peek at our game summary. Detroit really winning. Everything they need to in this matchup so far in the game. You know, Lavelle in the cage, saving 75% of his shots. Hicks, six of seven. Those were my two keys. Saving 65%, 55% of the faceoffs, well eclipsing those numbers. Detroit calls that timeout. What do you think the Titans are going to run? What's worked for them so far here in the first half? Well, one thing's for sure. They're going to make sure that they get the last shot. They're going to spin the ball here till probably about 10 seconds. Um, and initiate either with one of the short stick middies or I would go to Bernie, number 11, their most athletic offensive player to really generate a slide from Notre Dame because he, so far this game, on the dodge, has had a couple really nice passes to his teammates, putting them in good positions to score. Under 30 seconds to go, so there will be no timer on situation. We'll see Detroit be very patient. The ball is up to Mike Bernie. Bernie setting his man up. That is Tyler Anderson down the alley. Shot hits his own def 
Attackman right in the back. Ground ball picked up by Notre Dame into the middle of the field. Less than a second to go. And that will do it. If you're surprised, join the crowd. Detroit leads Notre Dame 5-1. to one. The one goal ties their lowest scoring half of the season. The other one was against Syracuse in their most recent loss in the Big East semifinals. That's the end of the first half. Let's send it back to the studio for the halftime report with Anish Shroff, Quint Kessenich, and Dom Starsha. Let me quote the immortal Ricky Bobby for a minute. That first half, that just happened. Detroit up five to one on the two seed Notre Dame, a Notre Dame team that came into the final week or so of the regular season, seemingly poised to be a one seed, an Irish team that was atop the polls or close to the top for much of the season. And this is a Detroit team that entered the tournament five and nine. And Quint, I'm gonna put you on the spot here. In the I just wanted people Sun. to watch the game. Go ahead, go ahead. I'll <laughs> well, let you reveal it. I, I, well, I said, I, I said that uh, one of the main issues here would, would could Detroit score, and one of the one of the keys to watching was, you know, how would they attack this Notre Dame defense? I think when you break down Detroit this year, they started at 0-6, but in the second half of the season, they've been very good. They're playing with confidence. They've attacked Notre Dame's defense inside, like there. Perfect pass inside. And Notre Dame's defense has been hesitant to come out and to try to create any turnovers on the perimeter. This is not a good situation for Notre Dame. You know, they, they're not a, I don't think they're built to really go out and chase, chase you around and, and try to make things happen at their defensive end. They want to be tight. They want to be uh, organizing on defense. They really need to get out and, and pressure Detroit on the perimeter, make them play a little bit, to get the, try to knock the ball down, you know, pick it up and go a little bit. I don't think that plays to their strengths. Put it in a context, the graphic you just saw, sub-500 teams in the tournament, not only have they never won, they haven't been within more than 10 goals. Stony Brook, the closest in 2012. And by the way, you thought Detroit was going to get shut out. You thought that was going to be the drama. I, I honestly thought they'd score four or five goals for the whole game. Uh, the fact that they have five right now, the fact that Notre Dame has only taken eight shots, they have one goal, and you go back their last two games, coming into this game, they're shooting 14%. That continues. Uh, nine turnovers. Their offense looks like they have lost all their confidence. The last eight quarters, Notre Dame has scored a total of five goals earlier today. Championship presented by Northwestern Mutual. Great crowd on hand here at Notre Dame Arlotta Stadium. They are witnessing a very surprising result in the first 30 minutes of action. Detroit leads Notre Dame 5-1. Welcome back in, everybody. Mark Dixon joined once again by the All-American from Virginia, Matt Ward. Wow, I think is the word that describes that first half. What does Notre Dame have to do to get back in this ball game? Well, they, they need to man up on both sides of the ball and make plays. Right now, they're playing lazy. They're playing like the team that's the underdog. Detroit really coming out and ha has really dominated the pace of play. Well, Detroit really got off on a great start, a lot of energy to start this game, and it was triggered by creating some turnovers. Coming into this game, Detroit led the country and caused turnovers. And they picked up right where they left off. Very active with their sticks and passing lanes, taking away skip passes from Notre Dame and just dominating this Notre Dame offense in every aspect, physically with their sticks, just energy-wise. And then on the flip side, offensively for them, they've caught Notre Dame ball watching. They've had a couple goals where they've snuck around for Mex, but right there, a simple backdoor cut. And what I love about them, they have three goals with the 30-second timeline. That is definitely by design. They want to play at that methodical pace and really take it to Notre Dame, and they're executing it perfectly. Well, take a look at the stats, 2-1 to one in shots. What else jumps out at you, Detroit, with the advantage over the Fighting Irish? Well, you look at the face-offs, one. Six, to, six out of seven have come up Detroit's way, leading to a huge advantage in ground balls. And that, at the end of the day, any upset comes with face-offs, ground balls, and goaltending. And right now, Detroit is pulling off all three of those stops. Well, basically, it's going to be a tough road to hoe for Coach Kevin Corrigan. Teams are 0 and 52 when scoring one goal or less in the first half. But Yale bucked the trend. They won today, trailing Penn State 5-1 at the half. 
Notre Dame certainly has the firepower to get back in this game. Yeah, this, there's a lot of lacrosse left, and Notre Dame definitely has the players and the skill set to do it. They just need to find themselves and the energy they that's required to outplay another team. New faceoff man, same result. However, Nick Ocello can't win it for Notre Dame. Here comes Hicks, leading the break, hits the point. Little face dodge, good defense by O'Hara. Turning the attack away, flag flies. We're going to have a penalty, it looks like, against Notre Dame. And O'Hara gets the penalty there. He actually did a very nice job on that fast break, bringing his body and preventing the shot and kind of the face dodge from Detroit, but it gets called with a slash, giving Detroit a huge opportunity here to get a five-goal lead 30 seconds in to the second half. Well, good way to start the second 30 minutes of action. O'Hara serving the one-minute slashing foul for Notre Dame. We'll see the Titans with their first extra man opportunity of this game. They come into this game averaging about a 28% success clip in converting, so not a real potent EMO. That shot is blocked. Doesn't get to the goal, it's still a shot. Who can win the race to the sideline? It's Detroit. Referee Matt Palem saying the impetus of the ball was changed with the kick. Therefore, it doesn't make a shot anymore. So, a ball stays with Detroit. And I think that's the wrong call there. I think it was definitely the force of the shot that resulted in it going out of bounds. Detroit's very lucky to continue to have possession here. In the sport of lacrosse, closest to when and where it goes out on a shot, gets possession. That shot is gobbled up by John Kemp. Big save for the senior netminder. And Notre Dame is able to thwart that extra man opportunity by the Titans. Can that man down defensive stop be the series of plays that Notre Dame needs to kind of get themselves back into this game? Right now, they're not having fun playing this game. You need to have fun and confidence to play your best type of lacrosse. You're in the locker room for Notre Dame. What, what was the message? What was the talk for Coach Kevin Corrigan to his players? It's a tough line that you have to, to walk there because you don't want your players to freak out because there's so much lacrosse left, but you need to energize them somehow, which generally comes with, you know, a coach's great speech and getting on his players. But again, you want your players to know this game is far from over. Ball was in the stick of Connor Doyle. He has the only Notre Dame goal so far. Over to Kavanaugh. Back check by Hebden, dislodges the ball. Kavanaugh picks it up. Squirting around the crease, feet up top to Marlott. Shot, save, Lee J. Lavelle. Split and a butte. Lavelle continuing his high level of play here early in the second half. And something that's becoming abundantly clear is Notre Dame cannot win an individual matchup one-on-one -on -one against this Detroit defense. They, their one goal came from Doyle who got there, but other than that, they haven't gotten any space. The ball's being put on the deck. They're giving outside shots, and Lavelle's gonna eat that up all day long for this Titans defense. Lavelle with his fourth save of the afternoon. Detroit, the bet, the butt of many a joke this week. Why are they in the tournament? Five and nine. Virginia's not there. Why isn't Hopkins there? Why is Detroit there? But Coach Kevin Corrigan telling us this week, Matt, the AQ was regional at one point. Now it's national, and it had really helped build lacrosse in the Midwest, Notre Dame in particular. And look, this year you have four teams from the Midwest in this tournament, and three of them are among the top five seeds in Notre Dame, Denver, and Ohio State. The game is definitely expanding outside the prototypical hotspots where it really kind of emerged as a, a national sport. But now you're getting players from Oregon, from California, from Florida. The Midwest is a hotbed now, so it's absolutely great for the sport. And again, I think when you look at things, Notre Dame's a team that lost two straight coming in the tournament. Detroit's won three straight, so the seeding is what it is, but it just shows how much confidence really plays into these games. Timer on against Detroit. Here's Bauregard back into the contest. Good to see him into the fray once again. Turnover. Nice pickoff by the Notre Dame defense. That is Buglione. So each team keeping the other at bay so far here in the second half. That was the first possession from Detroit when the timer came on 
they kind of forced the issue. Before, they were incredibly patient. They spun the ball around. 30 seconds is almost an eternity. It feels even a lot longer than it actually is, so you don't have to force the issue. And Detroit, prior to that possession, had done an unbelievable job in the first half of executing those situations. Well, you see John Kemp with his second save of the second half. Trying to energize his Fighting Irish team. Detroit has had six stall warnings, stick six timer ons against them. This is Will Corrigan. Steps in, quick double by Detroit. Coming around is Rogers. Shot to score! Sean Rogers, the senior, beats the defense. Low to high. Notre Dame with their second goal. And right there, Rogers makes a big time play, sneaking around the left side. You can see he gets number 31 caught up in the net. Dwyer from Detroit and Rogers keeps coming to his left. He gets to the middle of the field and again, the further you can get towards the center of the field, the more angles and options you have as a shooter. Big goal from Notre Dame, closing the gap to three goals. When Dwyer, the rangy six foot four defender, looked like he had a chance for a trail check. Rogers almost sensed it and tucked it. Beautiful job by Sean Rogers. Ensuing face-off. This has been a bugaboo so far for Notre Dame. The and goal by Rodgers ends an almost 15-minute scoring drought by the Fighting Irish. Detroit is winning the face-off category handedly, but it's not like they're winning all these draws. It's the scrap. It's the loose ball battles that they're dominating. And again, they force another turnover in one of those situations and regain possession. Physical play. As we saw, the tenacious Notre Dame effort Seven to four advantage now in it for Detroit. Can Detroit bounce back after giving up that goal to regain the momentum in this matchup? This is a critical possession for them. First midfield unit for Detroit back in the game. Bernie, Drummond, and Neems. Neems actually spotting the freshman Andy Hebden on his first midfield line here in the second half. And Bernie has a short stick again. A great opportunity for him to dodge and force the slide. David Miller, the fifth year student here at Notre Dame, spent the early part of his collegiate career at Maryland. He is the brother of defenseman Matt Millen. Timer on. How quickly will the officials put it on? And there you go. And I will say the refs have been very consistent, which is a good thing, I think, with that rule. And I obviously were talking to the coaches prior to the season. That was their biggest concern is how consistent would the refs be. Today, this crew doing a fabulous job keeping the pace of play at a consistent level. Feet inside the goal. Detroit answers the Irish tally with one of their own. It's Tom Masterson. The lead is back up to four. Sometimes good things happen when you put yourself in the right position. Masterson, just a simple cut. He is covered right here. And Maney with a great vision to see that Notre Dame's defensive player had his back to him. Number 10, David Miller was not watching Masterson as he gets the ball inside, and Detroit is having so much fun on the sideline. It's been very interesting to watch from up here in the booth. We've been watching him dance to the music, playing air guitar, shoving each other, slapping each other upside the head. Detroit having a good time here so far in South Bend. Hicks with the tough ground ball, whistle, push. Possession stays with the Titans. And again, Detroit just at this moment in juncture in the game wants it more. It's every ground ball they're getting is coming up red. Defensively, how is Notre Dame being picked apart really by Detroit at this juncture of the game? Again, it comes to bad off-ball defense. If I'm Notre Dame, outside maybe Bernie, 
I'm not worried about anyone running by me as a Dodger. Notre Dame has the athletes to win those matchups. Therefore, you shouldn't be, be getting beat off the ball inside like they are so far in this game. So the interior defense for the Irish needs to be tightened up a little bit here to try to get back into this contest. It's Bernie to Drummond coming out of the box. Underneath. Man was there, but the feed is mishandled. Kemp has the loose ball. Just chucks it up to the field. It's going to be an interference call against Detroit. Free clear for the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Looks like one of the Titans clipped him when he was trying to clear the ball. Detroit did a nice job of getting into the hole. It looked like Notre Dame could have had a transition opportunity, but Detroit playing very alert, recognizing the situations, winning the whistles, and getting themselves into the right position to prevent any type of Notre Dame offensive series. Doyle presses the edge. Good pick up by Hebden. It's Jamie Hebden, the all map first team selection defensively. This is Hopkins stepping in. Another quick double. Hebden is all over the field. Ball's behind the cage. It's Rodgers. He had the last goal. Denied here by Lavelle. High to high shot. And A.J. Lavelle with a beautiful stuff. And look at the difference between Rodgers' goal just a minute ago and that one. He didn't get to the middle of the field, and when that happens, goalies tend to know where you're shooting can eat them up. Turf monster bites Thomas Seibel. Here comes Notre Dame. Feed down low, shot to goal! Unlucky break for Detroit. Notre Dame takes advantage, and it's Matt Cavanaugh with the score. If you watched the North Carolina Lehigh game earlier today, North Carolina is so good at getting the ball up off the ground and creating offense in transition. Notre Dame doing their best impersonation of the Tar Heels. Pick it up quick. Get it to your freshman, your best offensive player who buries it in the back of the cage. Sean Rogers with the assist down to Kavanaugh. So far in this game, Notre Dame, when they've scored goals, Detroit has always answered them, not allowing the Irish to cobble together a run. But here comes Ocello. Off of the faceoff, nice stick check by Halpy. Ground ball is picked up by Rodgers. Can the Notre Dame Fighting Irish keep the momentum going? Beautiful faceoff win from Acella. Marlott with a shot, just bounces over the cage. Marlott started the season at a first team All-American clip. He's fallen off as of late not asserting his will and shooting the ball like he can. How about the decision to have Liam O'Connor start the game at faceoff? He's missed the past uh, four plus weeks with an injury. He comes back, really doesn't have much success there in the first half. What do you, what do you think of that decision to have him go for the first time in, in weeks in a, in a tournament game? I'm gonna trust Coach Corrigan that practice he looked healthy 100 percent if he's your best guy you go to him you get a lot of reps in practice you're practicing every day but given the success they've had early in this game which is not a lot you need to change things up well and that's exactly what they've done but what hasn't changed is detroit's tenacity on the defensive end here come the titans but marlott with a tough ground ball great ride by notre dame balls at midfield halpy picks it up off the carpet wheeling and dealing looking for help the canadian a wizard with the stick, long pass inside. One pass over, one on one shot, a goal. Brandon Beauregard on the assist from Alex Maney. And the Titans answer yet again. Credit Jordan Halpy. I hadn't seen him play before prepping for this game. He is a phenomenal player in the middle of the field. Look at this touch pass over the top that creates the two-on-one. Correction on the assist. It was Thomas Seibel, the short stick defensive midfielder with the touch pass, Matt. And just phenomenal offense transition. You know, again, it all starts with Halpy, but Detroit playing with confidence and they're playing without fear. That's a risky pass, but they clearly have the approval of their coach to push the envelope and try to capitalize on loose ball opportunities. Hicks wins it to himself. Here's a transition opportunity. Streaking down the middle of the field, just wide. Damian Hicks trying to score. 
But wow, Detroit right now playing with so much passion, emotion, and energy. Talk about them not allowing Notre Dame to go on runs. Every goal has been answered. Every goal by Notre Dame has been answered by a Detroit goal. That is impressive. And really, again, Notre Dame needs to gain the confidence. If they can't put multiple goals together, it's going to be difficult for them to come back in this game. The, the MAC champions, the MAC conference winless 0 and 11 all time in NCAA tournament play. The Detroit Titans look to buck the trend. Notre Dame looking to avoid a third consecutive loss. They lost their previous two games to Syracuse. Can the Irish battle back? It's Bernie with a head of steam underneath. Whirling Dervish shot. Hits off a cap. Nice check. Keeping Maney from getting position and any strength on that shot. Matt Miller, that is a potentially game-saving check right there. Dislodging the ball and getting a possession for Notre Dame. That could have been a five-goal lead for the Titans, but... They answered the bell, and they kept it at four. And you're an attackman. You've been in that situation hundreds of times throughout your playing career, Matt. How good of a defensive play was that from Miller? It's incredibly difficult when the ball is coming across the field to get your body into position defensively to stop the other offensive player. And he did such a nice job, again, sliding with his body and going to where the offensive player was going, not where he was currently at. Westy Hopkins, nice check by Halpy. Here comes the break. Detroit being led by Jordan Halpy. Elects to pull it out. You can see Halpy exiting the field, pumping his fist. The sideline is full of excitement. Good decision by Halpy right there. It, again, it's coming back to what their game plan was. That's not the first time in this game Detroit has pulled the ball out when they could have potentially had a transition opportunity. They recognize, especially in this game, Notre Dame has 14 shots with two minutes left in the third quarter. And they realize if Notre Dame doesn't get shots, they're not going to be able to come back when they're down four goals. So I think for them, possession is more critical than pushing those opportunities to try to score in transition. They know to be patient and methodical is to be successful. Detroit leading Notre Dame 7-3. Drummond, timer on. Detroit's been very comfortable working out of this scenario so far today. Drummond cross field pass, shot, save. John Kemp, beautiful position. He snuffs out that opportunity. But again, a nice job from Detroit. The timer is on. It's like they don't even notice. They continue to play their brand of lacrosse and are getting great opportunities when those timer ons have been implemented. Detroit is just the sixth team to reach the NCAA tournament with a record under 500. The last team to do it, Canisius fell the Mac. And Matt Cavanaugh just called for being in the crease. I saw the end result. I don't know if he was pushed in or he ran in. But again, a costly mistake from Notre Dame. The mental errors is something you're not used to seeing from them. And we've got Detroit down here with two, two and a half minute possessions. Notre Dame, a minute, maybe a minute 10, just not really taking care of the ball. And that's, and that's their M.O. I mean, they're a very yeah. patient team throughout the course of the year. They're going to try to hold on to the ball for the majority of the game and allow their teams are playing to really never have an opportunity to score. But Detroit has flipped the book and beating Notre Dame at their own game. Notre Dame typically the one to cut the field in half, really play smart, methodical lacrosse. And now we have Detroit. Defender is hung up. Feed onto the crease. Shot. Looks like we're going to have a push call against Notre Dame. Possession stays with the Titans. And I think that's the right call. Clearly pushed in the back. But a, the, I would say the right play for Notre Dame because he was wide open on the doorstep. You can't allow that to happen. Quick feed up top. Neems. If I'm Detroit here, I hold for the last possession of this half. Or hit it off the post. Ball rings off the pipe. Notre Dame catches a break. But again, the ride for Detroit, tenacious. Here comes Collins. He whips it cross field. And can Notre Dame capitalize now? They got fortunate that Den or excuse me, Detroit did not hold on to the ball for the last possession. Can they capitalize here in the last minute of the third quarter? Kavanaugh backing in, but the trail check by Hebden strips him of the ball. Lavelle picks up the loose ball. Under 10 seconds to go here in the third quarter. 
Lavelle will take it, hold it. And we end the third quarter the way we began it, with Detroit up on the second seeded Notre Dame Fighting Irish by four goals. Beauregard on the feed from Thomas Seibel. Can Detroit pull up the greatest upset in the history of the NCAA? Come back for the fourth quarter. The home of college sports. In what could be a historic game, the game track here so far between Detroit and second seed at Notre Dame. And you, I think the bottom line there tells the story. Almost as many turnovers as shots. You cannot win lacrosse games against any type of opponent with that stat line. And Detroit has come out fired up today. Get a good look at Kevin Corrigan. Number two seeds have lost twice in the first round, 2010. Syracuse upset by Army, 2007. University of Virginia bested by the Delaware Blue Hens, but not a one of those teams came out of the MAC conference. Again, this would be the first win in the conference history. And right now, they just look like the better, more confident team. A lot of lacrosse left to be played. Notre Dame, a dangerous team. And here's Jim Marlott. He picks up the opening faceoff. Cruises down feed, but Sean Rogers misses the ball. It flies out of bounds, and we just saw another turnover there by Notre Dame. And this is what I'm talking about in terms of your, you know, the player's psyche in this game. Like, that's just a careless error. Look at Matt Cavanaugh with a tough ride. Lavelle in trouble, but he gets it out. And going back to that, that's a careless error that tends to happen when things continue to not go your way. Andy Hebden takes on four gold jerseys and gets dumped to the turf. It's a scrum here at Arlotta Stadium in the middle of the field. Ball is kicked forward. Picked up by Miller. Excuse me, O'Hara. O'Hara to Sean Rogers. Up to Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh with the dodge. Hebden squeezes. Kavanaugh's shot. He scores. Matt Kavanaugh runs by the, de the defense, steadies himself, and sticks it past A.J. Lavelle. Is that the play that gets the Fighting Irish going in this contest? Kavanaugh getting his 27th goal in the season, and this is where he excels in the opportunistic dodging situations. He gets underneath, he's quick, and here the key is, again, step up the field. What that does in that situation, it protects your stick from a trail check, but also increases your angle as a shooter. Big play from the freshman trying to get this Notre, team, Notre Dame team clicking on all cylinders. Kavanaugh unassisted, so quick, stops on a dime. Ocello taken down at the faceoff. Play on situation, push. It's over to Notre Dame. Can they build on the Kavanaugh goal? Stephen Murphy checking into the game for the Irish. Goes back to Sean Rogers. Interesting to note, Notre Dame's biggest fourth quarter comeback this season, two goals against Denver. Feet inside, not handled. And that's a great job from Detroit's defense collapsing on the backside. Credit number 18, Jamie Hebden with the big time play. Halpy mishandles the ball in the middle of the field. He goes down to the ground. Ball is loose, who's gonna come up with it? It's Notre Dame. Offside call against Detroit. Possession to the Irish. Connor Doyle steps and shoots and scores. The Irish are cooking two straight goals. They trim the Titan lead to two. Detroit was off sides on that ground ball scrap. Notre Dame recognizes it, gets the ball, and begins pushing it down the field and catches Detroit. Not back on defense. Doyle with a nice lefty cannon.
to the upper portion, closing the gap to two goals. Detroit coach Matt Holtz doesn't like what he sees. Timeout Detroit. Do not go anywhere. The Irish, they are coming back. You can stick with a hardwired strategy when it comes to investing. Choose the stocks you like one by one. Or select Sector Spider ETFs and add the diversification. Welcome back to the NCAA Men's Lacrosse Championship presented by Northwestern Mutual. We have got a great one here at Arlotta Stadium. We take a look at the lower half of the bracket. Our game, Notre Dame in Detroit. Winner advances to play the winner of Duke Loyola to be played tomorrow. We take a look at the top half of the bracket. We've already seen some great lacrosse. Yale came back from a 5-1 halftime deficit. They upend Penn State and don't go anywhere, folks. After this one, I don't know if there's enough electricity in the Mile High City for the scoreboard between Denver and Albany and what's sure to be a very entertaining game. And entertaining is what we have right here. Notre Dame with two goals in 56 seconds, the first time they have put back-to-back -back goals together in this ball game. On the faceoff, Notre Dame wins it. They're sixth of the afternoon. They have won four in a row. And you can see that was a play that Detroit was making with ease early in the game, picking up every ground ball there. A simple ground ball just took his eyes off it. Notre Dame rips one. Nice save by A.J. Lavelle, happy with the ground ball. We've seen Detroit play fancy free, carefree lacrosse. Are they the ones that might tighten up in this situation? Beautiful ride by Notre Dame, but Halpy returns a favor with the stick check. Ball along the sideline. Halpy gets dropped. Ball is up. Here comes Marla. He is underneath the Detroit defense. He hits Rodgers. Rodgers scores! Broken play. Notre Dame capitalizes. They cut the Detroit lead down to one. What a play by Notre Dame. You can see the hit. And then number nine, Matt Miller, just sky balls one up. And they get it to 18, Rodgers, who buries in transition. Those are the type of plays that teams that are trying to mount a comeback need to make to get their players on the bench energized, to get their teammates ready to go. Notre Dame starting to play like the number two seed. Steven Murphy lowers the boom on Halpy. Hicks jumps the face off. Notre Dame, three goals in the last minute 44. The Irish battling back as we knew they would. Connor Doyle over to Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh up top to Tyler Kimball, over to Ryan Foley. Two seniors on the field right now in the midfield. Jack Near, the short stick D midi is on as well, playing a little cat and mouse, trying to get a pick and free up Kimball. Kimball, arms free, down low to Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh feed, cross field, shot. Looks like it hit the pipe, Lavelle got a piece of it. Good save by Detroit. And something for Detroit to keep an eye on here. Notre Dame is scoring in the transition situations. And Not Rogers wraps it around and makes the save. Flag flies. We're going to have a penalty against Detroit. It's a hold against John Dwyer of the Detroit Titans. And Notre Dame will have an extra man opportunity. And that's just a killer penalty. After the save, I, I don't see it. That uh, looks to be a gift for Notre Dame to get the man up situation. Irish on the extra man, spinning it around. Sosha shot, rings off the pipe. Ball being chased to the sideline. Who's going to come up with it? Notre Dame has won all of these plays so far in the fourth quarter. Hebden can't find it. Puts it ahead. Ball coming to the midfield line. It's Goose. Notre Dame has it. Coming up on the 11-minute mark. 
Kavanaugh steps in, rips one high. That one's headed out to Angela Drive. And Detroit's now all even. The penalty has expired, so it'll be six on six. Notre Dame, you mentioned it, Matt. They've won the hustle plays. Jim Marlott shot, doesn't get to the cage, knocked down. Here come, here comes Hebden and the Titans. Good pickup. Another ground ball by Joe Gifford. Now Lavelle's in all kinds of trouble. Gets out of it. 30-second clock is on. In the sport of lacrosse, you have 30 seconds to get the ball from defense into the offensive box. Detroit at midfield right now. Great defense. Double team. Balls on the turf. 30-second count continues, but it's off now as Notre Dame picks up possession. It's Marla. Another turnover for Detroit. Kavanaugh steps inside. Shot score. Notre Dame, again, getting its third straight goal, as you mentioned, on broken plays. You can see here Kavanaugh, again, an opportunistic dodge with a quick stutter step, gets to the middle of the field and buries the shot. I think Detroit on that clear missed an opportunity to call a timeout. They were clearly being double teamed, and that possession was really critical. Well, it looked like Coach was going to call a timeout, but you got to get in that offensive box. And Notre Dame, Miller recognized that and kept the attacker for the Titans out of the box and then waited for his help to come and dislodge the ball. Four goals in four minutes. And another face-off win for Ocello. He is de-sticked. Hicks can't pick up the ground ball. This is Jack Near pressing the issue for Notre Dame. And that's the second time that it's been questionable almost procedure for Notre Dame when the ball has been, the stick has been dislodged from their hands. You're technically not allowed to go put yourself in the play, even to pick up your own stick. Well, what's more, if the st ball stays in the stick, it's a turnover. But the ball did come out. Lavelle picks up the air and pass. He drops it behind the goal. Here comes Dwyer. Nice man ball between he and Chris Shevins. Detroit has yet to have the ball for an offensive set. They have been smacked in the mouth by this Notre Dame rally. What do you do if you're the Detroit Titans? I go back to what worked early. You know, you don't want to force the issue. You are scoring goals, playing patient, and again, right now you're tied. Who would have thought you'd been in this position at the beginning of the game? So things are still a positive for them, and they need to recognize that and just continue to play their game. Roll reversal. A week ago, Detroit led 9-4 against Siena. They came all the way back to win that game in overtime. Now they are the hunted. Can they handle the pressure here at Arlotta Stadium? Bernie, back in the game, over to Drummond. Drummond taking on the short stick defense of Quinn Cully. Switch by Notre Dame. Gets David Miller on Drummond. We'll see if the referees go with the timer on against Detroit, who are just spinning the ball right now, looking for that opening to attack. Here comes Bernie. Gets a step on his man. Quick slide. Shot doesn't reach the cage. Ball goes out of bounds. Possession stays with the Titans. And again, Detroit sticking to that game plan. As I mentioned, they want to move the ball to where Bernie gets a short stick. So he'll start with a long stick on him. They'll spin it, try to draw a slide, which messes with the matchup that Notre Dame wants. Then they'll identify it and get it to Bernie, who he looks to initiate from up top. Drummond now being marked by Tyler Anderson. Bernie being marked by Bru Brian Buglio, a close defender for Notre Dame. Andy Hebden gives the ball up to Drummond. Timer on against Detroit. 30 seconds to get a shot on goal. The ball in the stick of Bernie being guarded by O'Hara. Second team all conference selections against each other. Ball is knocked down on the exchange pass. Maney has trouble picking it up. Now he does. Less than 10 seconds to shoot. Shot. That'll satisfy the clock, but it also satisfies John Kemp's save totals. That's just the same as a turnover right there. 
It was a nice job by Notre Dame's defense preventing the Titans from getting a shot. I think the strategy there, if you're Detroit, when you know you're not going to get a shot, throw it out of bounds. Set your, allow yourself to set up a ride opposed to throw it at the goalie who could potentially create transition in the other direction. Yeah, good point. Major League Lacrosse, the model for that. Roll the ball into the corner, throw it out of bounds, get back on defense. But Notre Dame right now, they're clicking offensively in transition in broken plays. What do they have to do here six on six to get the go-ahead goal? It's going to be tough for them because on the six on six, there's really not a matchup that I've identified that they can win. Feet inside. Nice little off-ball cut right there by Stephen Murphy. Sends the ball just wide. Halpy matched up on Jim Marlott. Marlott, a first-team All-Big East midfielder. This is Shevin's little two-man game. Gets the short stick on attackman Connor Doyle. Doyle steps around, quick double, wheels back. Doyle likes that short stick matchup, shoots it just wide. Ball run out of bounds by Notre Dame. Possession stays with Detroit. And that's a nice job from Notre Dame. Setting a pick on the ball to allow Doyle to get the switch, to get the short stick matchup. And whenever you have an attackman matchup in a short stick, that's where you want to attack the opposing defense. Matt Cavanaugh so far in this half with three goals. Detroit only with two. Do you give it to Kavanaugh? This is Murphy. Working against Troy Dennis. Doesn't shoot after trying. Kavanaugh dips underneath, shot score! The freshman gives Notre Dame their first lead of the contest. His fourth goal on the game. A big-time freshman making big-time plays. And this is nice offense from Notre Dame. They moved the ball, lulled Detroit to sleep, and Kavanaugh with a nice, just simple face dodge. And he ducks underneath. The last time he dodged, he went topside. This time he goes underneath. There's nothing he can't do. Notre Dame outscoring Detroit 5-0 so far here in the fourth quarter. Just under five and a half to go. Hicks wins the faceoff to himself, but Ocello is all over him. Ground ball picked up by Landis. Huge faceoff win. Here comes a slow break. Ocello misses the ball, however. Ball rolls out of bounds. Possession to the Titans. And it looks like Detroit may be wearing down a little bit. Hicks wins the clamp. I just don't think there's enough gas in his legs to run away and separate his hands from the defensive player. You featured Matt Cavanaugh in the beginning of the game, Matt, in your edge, and he certainly has given Notre Dame just that, especially here in the fourth quarter. Four goals on the day for the freshman. How does Detroit respond? Can they recruit? This is Nemus working against Jack Neer. Bernie now with a short stick matchup. Runs by Miller, quick slide comes. Ball goes behind the goal to Beauregard. Detroit has been patient all day. They only trail by one. Drummond, little flick pass. Maney, stick checked away, ball checked away. Anderson, Maney picks it back up, the ball is loose. Players are selling out all over the field. Ball is still loose on the sideline. Can Detroit pick it up? Here comes Kemp. Flicks it into the crease. Possession, Notre Dame. What a difference the second half makes. Notre Dame was not winning any of those scraps early on in this game, but now dominating them. Notre Dame eight, Detroit seven. NCAA men's lacrosse tournament first round action. Notre Dame trying to prevent Detroit from becoming the first ever MAC team to win an NCAA playoff game. The Irish trailed at the beginning of the fourth quarter, 7-3. A 5-0 run has propelled them to this 8-7 lead. 
This is Ryan Foley working against Dennis. Feed back up top to Kavanaugh. Stutter step move. Thinks better of it. Kavanaugh has been the force. He has been the spark here for Notre Dame in the second half. Foley. Now we'll see how quick the refs are to give Notre Dame a potential timer on. Feed looked like it was tipped by Detroit. Possession stays with Notre Dame. A ill-advised pass right there. I'm not sure what they were trying to do. Fortunate for Notre Dame, they were able to maintain possession and call a timeout. Coach Kevin Corrigan decides to take a timeout. His Irish lead, Detroit, 8-7. We're back right after this. The Anish Roth in the studio with Quinn Kesnick and Virginia head coach Dom Starja. Coach, if you're Detroit, how do you approach these final three minutes? Uh, I, I think you have to try to make a play here. Coming out of a timeout, you get a chance to get yourself organized on defense. Uh, I think you're doubling the ball here. You know, it's, it's not in a good spot. It's above the goal line extended. The, the cage is going to be open, but I think you got to try to make a play. Notre Dame with a 5-0 run here in the fourth quarter. Mark? Anish, it's coming down to the wire here in South Bend. The Irish, five-goal run here in the fourth quarter. The faithful love it. They lead Detroit 8-7. Matt Cavanaugh, Matt, he has been a difference maker for Notre Dame here in this ballgame. The MVP of the U-19 World Games was a big-time recruit. Look at his speed, and he's a fearless dodger that really takes advantage of his quickness off-ball movement, as you can see there, as they redirect it. Just lightning quick underneath. Stepping up big for Notre Dame here in his first NCAA tournament game. Well, look at Matt Cavanaugh. Four goals all in the second half. His third four-goal performance of the season. Really keeping Detroit at bay. The Titans, no goals and five turnovers in the last 17 minutes of action here. As we're back in play, it's Cavanaugh that starts. Ball is up to Corrigan. Working against the defense of Troy Dennis. Each team with one timeout remaining. And again, it's all going to come down to when will the stall warning be put on. Feet across, shot to go. No stall warning needed. As Ryan Foley finds a soft spot in the backside of the Detroit defense, puts the Irish up by two. The senior captain with a leadership type shot from the back post. That was clearly a designed play from Notre Dame coming out of the break. They get it behind the cage and a simple skip pass with Foley backing off the crease. Awesome execution from Notre Dame. Foley now with their with giving the Irish their sixth consecutive score. Here in the fourth quarter, big face off for Hicks. Wins it to himself. Fast break opportunity. Can Detroit convert? They elect to pull it out. Good decision by Brandon Davenport. And then a turnover. Notre Dame gets it right back. Detroit has not been able to answer this Irish rally, but there's a hiccup at midfield. Possession stays, however, with Notre Dame. Marlott winds up, shoots Lavelle with the save. And that is a shot you need back if you're Notre Dame. No reason to take it with a two-goal lead. Sloppy outlet pass. Detroit looks tired. Whistle. Ball is loose. Push against the Titans. Possession to Notre Dame. Jim Marlott. Grateful they're able to get the ball back after taking that ill-advised shot for the Fighting Irish. Coming up on a minute 30 left in the game. To Coach Starsh's point, does Detroit start doubling and gambling on defense? So far, Lavelle stays in the goal. And what I actually really love about the stall warning this year, the new rule is that you don't have to keep it in the box for the two minutes because that rule was penal. You're punishing the team that worked harder than the other team to get the lead, and so you're giving the defensive team an advantage. Feet inside is knocked down by Dwyer. Can Detroit come up with a ground ball? They cannot. One minute left to go in the game. Shot, Kavanaugh gets dropped. Flag flies. Notre Dame will stay on the attack. 
Now if you're Notre Dame, you hold this ball as long as you possibly can. No shots. You're going to get the ball back, so kill as much time as possible. And it looks like they're going to be able to avoid the biggest upset in NCAA history. Timer on against Notre Dame, but it's all academic at this point. The Fighting Irish have dug down deep. Detroit finally coming out to double. Marlott just trying to run this thing out. Flips it over to Rodgers. Kavanaugh blocks it with his body to keep it from going out of bounds. Less than 10 seconds left to go here at Arlotta Stadium. Notre Dame survives and advances to Indianapolis. They advanced to the NCAA quarterfinals. They will face the winner of Duke versus Loyola. Now it's time to take a look at our Capital One player of the game, Matt Cavanaugh of Notre Dame. What a luxury it is for Notre Dame to have their best player be a freshman on the offensive end. He's going to be here in South Bend for at least three more years. Things are looking good, and he absolutely stepped up in the fourth quarter today. Let's take a look at our updated bracket. Lives and advances to the quarterfinals. A great day of lacrosse on ESPN. A 6-0 run does it for the Notre Dame Fighting Irish as they beat the Detroit Titans and avoid a titanic upset in the NCAA first round. We'll send you back to the studio, but stay tuned as we will return for an interview with Coach Corrigan. We'll be back in just a moment. And if you're a fan of the Fighting Irish, breathe out. Exhale, Notre Dame, thanks to six fourth quarter goals gets by Detroit nine to seven you know there's that uh, old Roger Conline. line you can glory in a team triumphant you fall in love with a team in defeat what did Detroit show you today that I mean makes you fall in love with them well credit to coach Holt and the entire Detroit program for the performance that they put on today to come into the playoffs is such a massive underdog and to play that the way that they did uh, you know, you know, it's a victory for Detroit. Uh, they can take this and go forward and build a program of something like this. On the other hand, too, credit to Coach Corrigan and the Notre Dame yeah. guys. At this time of year, they're still playing. You know, and uh, and you know, and Coach Tambroni and Coach Cassis and Coach Starzia wish that they were in Kevin Corrigan's shoes. <laughs> Dom Starzia, Quint Kesnick, and Ishraf. Uh, Quint, Notre Dame in that fourth quarter, what changed? Well, a key adjustment. Down seven to three, entering the fourth quarter. Kevin Corrigan uses a ten-man ride. He pressed three attackmen down. They rotated rotated defender up and four times Detroit was fa uh, failed clears and off of those failed clears Notre Dame got some transitional opportunities here was a bog down Detroit clear in the middle of the field next thing you know the fighting Irish are underneath Rogers bangs the goal uh, you had failed clears face-off success for Notre Dame uh, and complete dominance in time of possession